Hello. Well, as regular viewers will know, I tend to focus on audio and video electronics, but uh, occasionally it's nice to do something else, and this is one of those occasions, because I have a very old, beautiful multimeter here. This is quite something. So this is a Fluke 8375A digital multimeter with Nixie tube display. This was given to me years ago. And there seems to be very little information on this uh, on the World Wide Web. Uh, it's a case of uh, people sell them just for the tubes, really. There's no inherent value in it, which is a shame. So I think we'd like to do a bit more with this one. Now, I understand that it's dead, and I'm a little bit cuff, uh, wary of powering it up. So uh, especially a lot of screws seem to be missing. So I'm going to take a look inside before we power it up. Uh, and see what we can find uh, and if everything looks intact and safe then I'll power it up and see what we get. There's a mains voltage selector at the back here 230, close enough. There's also a fuse at the back. These are for some options which this one doesn't have digital outputs and such. I think we'll um, Actually, I won't check test the fuse as such. What I'll do is I'll meter across the fuse holder so that covers the fuse and fuse holder in one go. I think I'd better take this lid off as well and see what's underneath. Now, I don't have the schematics, um, and I'm probably going to need them because it'll be way out of cal, and if it can be recovered at all, it'll be way out of cal. It'll need a lot of uh, setting up. So, power supply. Interesting noise. Something sliding around inside it. Power supplies here. Oh, schematics would be useful. All right, let's power it up. Oh, the on-off switch feels a bit dubious. I got stuck. Try a bit of switch cleaner on that. I think I'll test that switch before I uh, apply any power. I'll be plugging it into an isolated power supply. Absolutely nothing. Interestingly dead. There are some test points on the power supply. We don't know what they are. But they're obviously going to be voltages, so uh, let's see if there's anything on them. It doesn't say what the voltages are. That would have been helpful, Fluke, if you could have marked them up. I'm assuming that the chassis is the ground voltage. Okay, start at test point number one. The multimeter, so you might be able to see it as well as me. Uh, not sure what range I should set. I'll leave it in auto range. Right, okay. Power it up. Nothing, I think. Test point two. Nothing. Let's ground that. All right, I'm going to set a range on here. Right. Test point one. Get that again. 6 volts that might be AC actually test point 2 almost nothing don't know where test point 3 is test point 4 nothing test point 5 nothing Okay. There's a big capacitor at the bottom there. We're going to have a look at the uh, positive side of that big capacitor, I think. Hmm. 
nothing useful. There's a bridge rectifier circuit there. I wonder if that's alive. Right, okay, let's see if we can take this um, power supply out. So the transformer. Oh, I hope the transformer's okay. Transformer here goes onto the power supply board, which is a plug-in module. I wonder if I can work out a little bit of the uh, wiring. For example, if there was a zero volt and then everything else were taps off there, it would be helpful to know that for checking this transformer. Well, I should be able to get some AC voltage from almost any combination of contacts here, shouldn't I? Actually, I'm going to do a DC resistance test first. I made contact with one winding. Maybe with separate windings. Make sure that every contact on here has a resistance to at least one other pin. So the second and third, which you've got a red and a black wire, appear to have no contact with anything. Oh, there's a resistance there. 200 ohms or something. Very high voltage winding, perhaps, for the Nixie tubes? Could be. So let's go across a pair that do have some contact. Right. Switch to AC. And see if I can measure any AC voltage when it's powered up. Trying to keep my fingers away from what potentially could be that high voltage contact. Making me a little bit nervous. Yeah, we have voltage, 26 volts or so on there. Let's look for that high voltage contact then. What well, I'm guessing is a high voltage. These two, because they've got high resistance. And you would use a high voltage for the Nixie tubes. So let's see if I can measure a high voltage on them. Two hundred and twenty four volts. Right. So without having a schematic to hand, it looks like the transformer is alive. So look at the power supply. There's a capacitor here which is um, oozed badly. Eight microfarad, 350 volt. Right. Let's uh, have a look at that one. 10 microfarad. <laughs> Seems to be fine. I mean, it clearly needs replacing, but uh, it probably isn't the cause of my uh, breakdown. And what's the chances of my having a capacitor of uh, that kind of value? And that's a weird value, isn't it? There's a couple of 220 microfarad capacitors. We'll check them while we're here. That's okay. Again, apparently okay. What's the nearest thing I'd have to an 8 microfarad 350 volt capacitor? I may have a 10 microfarad. Let's see what I can find. Whilst rummaging for capacitors, I just noticed something. You know the capacitors that have a habit of um, breaking up and causing lots of smoke? Uh, there's a, been a mention on the EV blog about these, and I've also covered it myself on V2000 video recorders. I've actually just found some brand new ones, and these have broken up. They've never been fitted to anything. So these capacitors literally disintegrate just through age, not even use. <laughs> they can go straight in the bin. These things are dangerous. Horrible things. Yeah, they're all swelling up. Binned a lot of them. 
Wow. What I've managed to find is uh, a 4.7 microfarad at 400 volts and some 1 microfarad at 450 volts. So it's not going to be terribly pretty, but I can install these and safely get to around about 8 microfarads um, to replace this 350, 350 volt 8 microfarad capacitor which uh, amazingly meters out okay, despite looking dreadful. Got to be hyper careful with polarity here. Any uh, kind of mix-up will be uh, quite exciting. Okay, so there's a temporary lash-up, and absolutely this is temporary. There's no way in the world I'd leave this permanently set up like this. We have one microfarad on that side of the board, two more ones, and a 4.7 on that side of the board. And obviously I'm not happy about the the way these tracks and these leads are set up. It's just not a good arrangement. Um, there's a hazard that something could short out here. So it's strictly as a test. If we get this thing working, I'll certainly be buying a suitable capacitor to replace this abomination. High voltages, you can't muck about. We need that uh, done properly in due course. But let's uh, just see if we have... The right capacitance across there now. So it's supposed to be about eight. And we have 8.3, good. All right, it's worth uh, plugging back in. I'll just do another final check. Negative, 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 and negative. Really can't afford to get the polarity wrong there. All right, a little bit nervous, but uh, that capacitor certainly had turned into a horrible goopy mess. Still no response. Didn't expect to be. I think I'm going to start by just having a look at this high voltage that I've replaced the capacitors for, the high voltage part here. Um, I'm just going to see if that's there, because if it isn't, there's something fairly fundamentally wrong, isn't there? Okay, I'm set up with this uh, meter connected DC volts across those capacitors, the original being rated at 350 volts. So it's going to be some hundreds of volts on there, if there's anything at all. Let's try it. 280 volts. OK, we have that. A close look at the PCB. Here you can see my horrible bodged up uh, 8 microfarad capacitor. Um, I think, since there's so few components on here, I should be able to do DC tests on, well, certainly all the diodes and probably quite a lot of these transistors. Yeah, let's give that a shot. Okay, diode voltages. Let's just see if we see anything. It's not normal diode voltage. That's all the diodes looking promising. These are ICs. AD three zero one AH date coded seven three three six Wow about the same age as my car these look interesting it's fluke branded resistors I think seven point two K plus or minus point one percent oh it's pretty critical I think that's about seven point two K this one the same I mean, the ICs are certainly worth investigating some more, aren't they? I'm looking for a ground point. Let's see if there's a, an obvious ground point somewhere. And I'm assuming that the bottom end of this capacitor is ground. Though that could be an incorrect assumption. Test point four. Over schematic, it would help so much. Okay. So this heat sink is connected to the top of this capacitor, so we should see some voltage less than 10 volts unregulated on there compared to test point four. 
so I think I want to meter this voltage here because that is the output from this tran power transistor uh, and that's going to be presumably some voltage regulated down from 10 volts so that would be a good start if I can make those measurements test point 4 being the assumed ground when it's connected I'll check to see if test point 4 is connected to the chassis but of course that doesn't necessarily prove anything I'm going to assume well let's have a look see if test point 4 here is chassis no yeah it seems to be the ground point oh that's confusing me then isn't it well, for the purposes of measuring the voltages regarding this transistor and that big capacitor, this is our ground point, test point four. Even if not the complete machine ground. So some unregulated voltage here in the order of less than 10 volts. I think there will be because I can see a reading on the meter already. I should get my arm out of your way. volts. I'm surprised it's as much as 10 volts because that capacitor is only rated at 10 volts. That's quite poor, isn't it? And so at this point here there should be some regulated voltage. And there isn't. Well, 0.7 volts. So right there we have the problem. That transistor is not regulating. It's not giving us an output voltage. The transistor seems to meter out okay, so we need to look at the circuitry around it. So this is the base circuit here. I mean, it's pretty obvious which was the base, just by the very thin track compared to that one. So these are the transistor terminals here, that plus that. So this is the base circuit here. This is probably the emitter. Is that right? Base, collector, emitter, probably. I'd have to look up the, di look up the uh, specs of the transistor. Not sure what kind of transistor it is, but anyhow. So this is the um, base drive here comes from this transistor, 2N3053. This point here is the base voltage for this regulator transistor. And I bet that's at uh, more or less nothing relative to test point four. Let's prove that. 1.26 volts. That transistor should be on and conducting. You know, something I'd noticed earlier on is that these uh, couple of capacitors here seem a bit high value. Let's just um, check that again. 67, supposed to be 47. And this one. Sixty odd, and it's supposed to be 47. Now you know what um, high value capacitors can mean, don't you? Can mean they're leaky. So let's um, pull one conductor off the bottom, I think, of each of these. Because double-sided board, I have to be a bit careful. Pull one connection off and test them again. Maybe I should just change them anyway. Because if they're leaky, they could be upsetting the DC conditions on the board. Now, as ever, of course, heating the component up can alter the way it works. And I've had this many times before. You meter a capacitor, uh, and once it's been heated up by desoldering, it changes its attitude altogether. So it may be just as well to change them anyway. I believe, you tell me if you agree with this, that on old electronics like this, capacitors tend to go leaky. And on more modern components, capacitors tend to go high ESR, uh, which is... You say uh, they have a, a high equivalent series resistance. 
This is an ESR meter, so it's probably more appropriate for um, modern components. Um, actually, a, was it Carson's Lab on YouTube has a super piece of kit he's built with an eye reading on it, which tells you if capacitors are leaky. That just doesn't make sense to me. That those capacitances are too high. I think they're leaky. I can just put a, uh, do a resistance reading across them, and of course you will see it rise over time. That's normal, but does it never stop rising? You know, it's supposed to just go up to once it's charged. It's supposed to get to a a, a point and stop taking any more current. But if it continuously takes current and continuously gives us a resistance reading, then that means they are leaky. So what it's doing, what it's doing now is correct. We're going up. Oh, it's kind of... You can feel that that's wrong. It's only 32 mega. I mean, it's pretty high resistance, but that is... That's leaky. Okay. So it's electrically leaky, it's not so much leaking gunge, it's... and that's a bit lower, that's about 5 mega ohms. You know, a good capacitor, it will charge up and it will stop going up. Got to go up to infinity, I should say. So let's uh, replace those and look at how a modern, good quality component will react in the same condition. So there, 47 microfarad, 25 volts, both of them. Let's fit some uh, modern components. It's going to be a bit awkward because, of course, all modern components uh, have their leads the other way around. But let's uh, do that. Okay, let's try this. I managed to find a similar shaped component. So this is 47 microfarad, 35 volts. Let's see what we get on this one. That's a more realistic capacitance value. This isn't quite the shape I wanted, but let's try it. Right. So those two really are 47 microfarad. I don't believe they're leaky, so we'll fit those. Okay, where well, there was room for the... Um, Capacitor here, which mounted the other way around. It's not ideal, but that's not too bad, and, and that one fitted in there beautifully. And they are 47 microfarads, whereas these are reading all kinds of weird things. I'm sure that's not fixed it, but it was worth doing because it was another suspect capacitor. Okay, well, we'll try it again. Still, this DC voltage we want between test point 4 and... The output from that regulator. 0.7 of volts, no. Something wrong with that. Uh, 2N3053 and 2N3054 circuit. I wasn't planning on trying this, which is <clears throat> take it off the board in case there's something on the motherboard that's cause that voltage to buckle but uh, I think we should now so I've pulled it off the main board and we're just going to look for that voltage between test point 4 and the output of the voltage regulator 0.9 of a volt so our problem still very much remains on this board all I know at the moment is I've got 2N3053 driving a 2N3054. Uh, apparently they could also be set up to then that drive a 2N3055, which is a very popular transistor. Uh, so it's a sort of classic design. It shouldn't be that complicated. But we're not getting the... They're not working correctly. There's something wrong with these transistors and the way they're being driven. But I'm at a loss as to exactly how this board is designed. Clearly these two transistors have been changed at some point in the past or 
fiddle with because there's a bit of interesting soldering there. And the date code on most of the components in here is 73. And uh, that one's dated 78. And that one I can't quite read, but it, it could well be similar. So uh, that implies those have been changed in the dark and dingy past. That's another 2N3053 there. This weird number here, the 40372, is a 2N3054 with built-in heatsink. ED. So I wonder about these ICs. Uh, AD301AH. I mean, what are they? Bit of research. It turns out the uh, AD301H is an LM301H. So, H. so I've found a little collection of garbage. Any of these any help? Well, there's an LM301AH there, although <laughs> pins are a bit mashed up. We could use that one. It's a manky old thing. LM302AH, not sure if that's identical. 741, not so sure. 723, again, don't know if it's a good match. Oh, LM301AH, okay. So they are both LM301AH. I think that's probably what we need. Let's see what I've got here. Uh, I think that's another 301, but it's pretty manky. And that's a 3053. So let's assume we won't be using those. Shall we replace one at a time? I'm inclined to say that if it doesn't work, I think I'll refit the original part. I don't know. We'll see. And we're going to go with this idea of looking for this output from the regulator again. That IC might not even be connected to this circuit. This is no way of knowing without any schematics and going through the entire board, chasing through everything. But at least doing it this way, there's no real risk to the rest of the machine because I'm not connecting it up to the rest of the machine. I'm looking for a voltage out on the output of the regulator. Very unlikely I fixed it, but give it a shot. Still less than a volt. Right, I think I'll put the original component back. Okay, let's uh, again do that output voltage test here to see if we've got some regulated output voltage somewhat less than 10 volts it might read all the way up to 10 volts because it'd be off load but some voltage 0.9 volts again we fit the original part can we draw any conclusions from the fact that these two transistors here have been replaced before One's a 2N3053 and the other one is, I don't know what, 65120. Tracing through the circuit, you see, this is the transistor that drives the main regulator. And it has, its base circuit is involved in, well, what? This transistor Q7. A resistor and I don't know what else. This is clearly a supply rail that's on TP2. What is that? Since I lack schematics I've been just going through this board testing everything in sight because there's not that much to it. So uh, well, what have I done? I'll just go through. We tested all the diodes earlier. I looked at the capacitors. I replaced this 8 microfarad capacitor with this awful mess. They've been tested. Those resistors been through all these resistors. That's a Zener diode of about 9 volts or something. 9.5 volts forward voltage. 
Let's see what I have elsewhere. Reverse voltage. I should say Zena breakdown voltage. Replace that capacitor. These meter open circuit, which is fine. I substituted each of these uh, and then put the originals back. That's replaced capacitor. Been through all these resistors. Test took all these off the board and tested them. Took that off the board and tested it. Took that off the board and tested it. I haven't checked that preset resistor, a couple of resistors. There's not much left, is there, really? <sighs> right, let's look at this preset resistor. It's a 500 ohm, so if we look at the outside of the track, it should read around 500 ohms. Oh, if two terminals are connected together, the slider and one end, then you'll only get whatever its set point is. So uh, I can't see, but I think these two are connected together. So, all right, that's believable. Not a lot left. What's this? Um, 510 ohms, is that? Yeah, it's believable. What's this one? 51 ohms, I think. Uh, 110. Am I reading it wrong? Hmm. Huh. Do you know, I doubt that that's the problem, but that does appear to be a burnt out resistor. And looking at it, it does look pretty blackened in the middle. So that should, I think, be a 510 ohm resistor, and it looks like it's got a bit overheated. So we'll replace it. Rather, it should be a 51 ohm resistor, and it's reading over double that. Let's uh, find another. All right, well, I don't have a 51 ohm resistor of sufficient capability. So what I'll do is I'll fit a couple of 100s in parallel. That'll give us 50 ohms, which is in, within the 5% tolerance of that. Um, I've measured them, and they are. Um, Obviously, I'd like to fit the correct component later, but it'd be useful for just testing this thing out. OK, so we have 50 ohms there rather than 51, but the old resistor had gone up to 110 or something hideous, so that was burnt to a crisp. Right, well, at least we found a component that was wrong. I don't think that's the cause, but you never know, so let's uh, try it again. So again, I'm going to uh, play safe and just see if I can see that uh, regulator voltage at this point here, which I think should be in the order of 9 or 10 volts. 0.9 volts still. I'm just going to reconnect it to the board, just in case there's some signal here we don't know about. And try once more, but I'm sure it's still dead. Not going very well, this, is it? For such a simple board, I've been right through and checked, checked every component. <sighs> I must have missed something. Well... There's a possibility the problem is in the transformer and there's some voltage which needs to be there which isn't there because of a transformer problem. That would be a nuisance, wouldn't it? Well, I have to confess, some time has gone by since I last worked on this uh, digital multimeter. In fact, about 18 months. So uh, really time to start again. But maybe that gives me uh, a fresh pair of eyes for it. And we also have the service manual on uh, CD. So um, I can now have a look at the voltages that are supposed to be coming out of the power supply and make some sense of it. Right, let's start with the power supply and go from here. So it tells us we should be using a differential voltmeter, but that's probably because uh, it doesn't know that we have access to high quality digital multimeters uh, that are not mains powered. So uh, I don't think we need a differential multimeter in this case. We just need to read some voltages. So it says the low point should be TP4. Now, I thought TP4 was the ground point before, didn't I? It seemed to be the low point in the uh, power supply voltage, but not actually ground. 
So it's a floating ground sort of thing, probably. Right, so our low point is there. And we should measure now test points 2, 3, 5 and 1. We should measure various voltages. And they are 2, 3, 5 and 1. The test point 2 should be plus 18 volts. Let's measure that one first. No, that's about 5. That's wrong. Test point 3 should be minus 18 volts. That's more or less nothing. Test point 5 should be 5.25 volts. That's very low. Test point 1 should be 200 volts. And that's about 80. So every voltage is completely wrong and all low. But you remember earlier we did measure voltage across the capacitor that should have been in the order of two or 300 volts, and that was. Right, so all voltages are completely wrong in a power supply. Uh, let's see if we can um, work it out from the schematics then. Let's um, have a look at R1, 510 ohms, that should have... Uh, over 200 volts on both sides of it. So let's uh, find that one. Of course, none of the components are labelled on the board, or very few of them. It's a case of uh, read it off the diagrams. So um, we should have high voltage on there. This be plus 200 volts, let's measure it. 292 volts, that's good. The other side of R1 I can't really get to, but R2 is nearby electrically. Not sure which side is which, but let's uh, test it. High voltage on one side. 80 volts on the other. And that could be because the 18 volts supply is not there, so it's been shut down. OK, so is the 18 volts is our serious problem. Do a similar process then. Find R5. Let's see that. It's at the bottom, a bit awkward to get to. That's the one I changed, actually, because it was out of spec. One side's connected to the diodes. Yes, yeah, a little awkward to get to, but let's see what I can do. 34 volts on one side. That'll be, presumably, output from the diodes. Let's try to get to the other side of the resistor. Very awkward from here. OK, I have got a point at which it should be the other side of the resistor. 35 volts, right. So everything around R5 looks sensible, but then we're not getting any output uh, on the 18 volt line, which is on test point 2. I'll just confirm that. Well, we are. We're getting about 5 volts instead of 18. So we'll read the explanation of the 5 volt, the 18 volt rail. Op amp U1. And they come from the A8 logic board, surprisingly. OK, so this reference is all very interesting. That makes it back from the um, logic board, which is this one. Looks a little bit grotty. So uh, I'm going to meter out that the reference signal does get to the relevant place. OK. But it all does look a bit scabby. There's a lot of grot around here. So I'm going to clean up these connectors. I'll show you. There's a bit of um, some sort of mucky white powder in here. I'm going to clean the connectors up and refit that and see, just make sure that that's all working properly. Just a little deoxit on that connector. Let's see now if any of the voltage has come up. 193 volts on the 200 volts on the 200 volt line. I think the uh, display's lit up. Let's have a look. Aha, uh -huh, we might be getting somewhere here. 
Right, I think I'll switch off a few of the studio lights so you get a better view. Well, this is exciting. So you'll be seeing this uh, for the first time, as am I. So isolation transformer. Um, something's happening. Self-test. Well, I've got something on the display, which is more than I've had before. And it's sampling, but I seem to be getting gobbledygook on the display. Of course, I don't know how to work it, which doesn't help. That's on volts DC. And it's making odd noises like relays are triggering. Switch it off for a second. So if I put it to ohms and short the inputs together, let's see what I get. And self-test is in the off position. Try that. Zero ohms. And if I open circuit, oh. It stays zero ohms. I thought I was actually reading something sensible for a moment. I'm not sure that switch is actually working properly. Volts AC, random number generator, even with the inputs shorted. Volts DC. That looks a little bit more sensible. OK, I could apply a voltage to that and see if it measures anything. Let's do that. I'll switch it off for a moment. OK, I have 5 volts DC there. Let's uh, see if it measures 5 volts DC. Nothing meaningful. The sample weight control works, if you look at that. sensible. Am I not in a... Ah, maybe I haven't select auto range. Does that help? Ten volt DC range? Nothing. The input doesn't seem to make any difference. Whatever I apply to the input, it makes no difference at all. Maybe I should pull the other boards out and clean the connectors on those too. Okay, I've cleaned up those contacts as well and dried it all off with um, compressed air. Now, <clears throat> I don't think it's going to work uh, and I'm not sure it's going to be fixable, but um, at least we've got the display going. Anyway, I'll power it up one more time and let's see if we get anything. There it goes. That actually seems a little bit more sensible. At least we seem to be reading proper numbers now. That actually seems better. It's reading 10 ohms from somewhere. Ah, that's because we're in self-test. Oh, it's got self-test volts. Oh, this is looking much better. I think. Or is it stuck on 10, 10 of everything? Oh. Yes, it's reading 10 of everything. So still the inputs are not making any difference at all. So I suppose insofar as it looks like it's actually the meter part is reading something, I guess that's some sort of progress. But uh, actually measuring anything from the inputs is not happening at all. If I remove the filter, does it jump around more? No, it just shifts. <laughs> Let's just cover off the rest of the supply voltages, which I didn't check earlier. So test point one should be 200 volts, which we have. Test point 
2 should be 18 volts. Yes. Test point 3 should be minus 18 volts. Yes. Test point 4 is ground. And test point 5 should be plus 5 volts. Yes. Now, although a pair of this machine might look all a bit daunting, the service manual is extraordinarily detailed. And it tells us there's a board A11, which is kind of a prescaler board, and buffer, I think they call it. And basically, for most of the ranges, what goes in here is converted to 0 to 10 volts there. So it very helpfully says, to determine if trouble exists in the analog section, use the following checks. Connect a, uh, well, battery-powered differential voltmeter. It's not so much differential, just a voltmeter to this board uh, A10 and um, select volts DC and 10 volts and apply 10 volts. I've got roughly 10 volts applied here from a power supply um, and you should get 10 volts at this test point and then it says if you don't then you've got a problem with the analog section and if you do your problems with the digital section so that's all very helpful so um, let's uh, switch it on and see if we get a reading there and we're not getting a useful reading there uh, so that very much implies that we have a problem on the analog side which I kind of believe to be the case because the, uh, the meter reading does look like it's reading something. So um, we need to look at the board A11, I believe. But I do want to make absolutely certain that the connections are making it through the front panel to the uh, measurement system. Right, with the machine powered down, I'm seeing the 10 volts here at this pair of wires it goes into the A11 board, which is the input side. So I do believe that uh, everything up to that board is working. The switches here and the input connectors are working fine. The service manual says we should use Freon to clean the uh, PCB, but uh, in the interest of saving the planet, let's not do that. In case we have multiple faults, let's check again the voltage at this um, output from the input stage on TPs 3 and 4 here. That's reading 0.6 volt, 0.76. That's quite interesting actually. The voltage I was reading on there was very much the same voltage I was reading on its own display. So the D to A seems to be working. Let's just um, prove that again. That's quite remarkably good, actually. So the D to A appears to be working. Our problem lies <laughs> with the input circuit on A11. You know, earlier on, before I looked at the diagrams in more detail, I could see that the input signal was getting through to this board, um, which is A12. But uh, that's the ohms converter. But what I really needed to do was look on A11, which is a buffer board. So uh, let's just prove that we have continuity on these wires going to the buffer board. We've got, a, according to the diagram, a blue and a black wire and a red, red, white. There we go. They're the three wires. The blue one is plus 18 volts. So that's a supply. We can check that in a minute. So let's check that we have black gets through from the ground that's this wire here yes and that the red goes to red and white that's this one do what that's odd so it's this block here, and we have a connection from the red terminal here to the red wire here, which goes to the ohms board. 
but we're not getting a connection through to the red and white wire which goes to the buffer board. Let's investigate what this TB1 thing is. And it seems to have connectors labelled T and B, which are presumably top and bottom. So I think there's supposed to be another red and white wire going into the bottom. And this may just be a terminal block. I think that's what TB stands for. But we can't really get to the bottom to see the wires down there. Yes, underneath there are more connectors. Very hard to get to. Okay, looking closer at the diagram, there are two 50k resistors, I believe, in series with the input, which is what these red and white wires go to. And that's these very odd looking resistors here. So uh, let's see if uh, they connect to the front panel. To the red and white terminal and the input. Maybe not making the world's best connection, but it's 100k. So that's getting through to this board here. So we should have 100k to that red and white wire from the uh, input terminal. And that solders actually straight onto uh, a relay contact here. So that's in the non-energized position at the moment. It may be that that relay is not switching over or has bad contacts or there's a fault somewhere else in the circuit. Unfortunately I don't have, of course, the uh, required extension that would allow us to uh, work on this board. So it's a little bit hard to do anything with it. But one thing I still haven't done is check that we have 18 volts on the blue wire going into this board. So let's do that. I think that'd be 18 volts relative to TP4 on the power supply board, which we discovered was the ground. Yes, we have 18 volts there. Well, it appears I may have disturbed something in a good way. Turn some lights off so you can see the display better. It's now reading approximately zero and I've got my power supply connected up. If I switch that on to 10 volts it's reading 10 volts although it's reading negative 10 volts which is the opposite polarity to what I would have expected to see turn this down yes we're reading voltages it goes wrong it would appear when I go over 10 volts ah but of course it goes over range that's why Go to the 100 volt range. Yes. The polarity is correct now. Go down. It's reading the correct polarity on the 100 volt range. Go back to the 10 volt range. Oh, that's working now too. I'm actually getting sensible readings out of it. So 5 volts. Yes. 100 volt range. 10 volts. Excellent. Wow, that's huge progress. Let's uh, switch it off. So I think I must have got to whatever was a bad connection in there somewhere. Let's see if we can measure some resistance. Well, it's got a self-test for resistance. Switch it to ohms and it reads, it's in the specification somewhere. I forget how many ohms, so we'll need to check that one. 19.999 means overload on this. Let's uh, short the terminals. And some fraction of an ohm. Back to our volts DC. I'm just overwhelmed by the fact that it's working. Take that to about 20 volts, I think. And let's try putting the filter on. So that, I think, is an averaging. That seems to be working. Try auto range. Auto range is correctly holding the range. Oh, wow. I'm sure it'll need a full calibration and I would start with setting all the power supply voltages accurately because some of those are slightly off. To get the degree of precision that this thing can do, it would need a full calibration. But uh, we certainly seem to have it working.
Right, let's do a few uh, more quick measurements. So we've got it on volts DC. I'm feeding it with, well, the power supply says 31.9 volts. This says 31.9, and my regular meter reads about 31.5. So one of them's slightly out. Uh, but it may well not be this one. It's reading quite dependably at the minute. Just check some of the internal um, tests. It's got a ohms test, put it into ohms mode. It's reading 99.99 ohms. Uh, and you should be able to read it in kilo ohms, but this button's a bit sticky. Hmm. I have had that work on occasion before, so it looks like the, the latching mechanism is slightly jamming on that. I wonder if I can um, fix that. Let's have a quick look at that. After a lot of wiggling and pushing, I managed to get the uh, kilo ohms button to work. And it reads 0.1 kilo ohms. That's correct, but this switch is clearly um, not working very well. It's, it keeps locking out and you have to wiggle and jiggle. That's actually working properly now. Okay, I had some trouble with this kill ohms button and I applied a little bit of service oil to the front in there and exercised it and it's now latching nicely. So I can operate that. So the thing I'd like to briefly demonstrate is the built-in self-cal uh, test function here. Just put some sample values on. So we switch it on. Zero volts being applied to the input and that is reading a good zero as well. So if we move to the volts DC, you have to move this switch and also select it here. So we're already in volts DC, um, and we have, I think it's 20 volts plus or minus 0.1 volt on the volts DC position. So that's 20 plus or minus 0.1. So that's well in spec, it's reading 19.93. The next position up is volts AC. So we go volts AC and press the AC button and we should have, uh, it says we should have 13 volts plus or minus two. That's pretty inaccurate. Um, and we seem to have about 28 volts, so that's way off. So the volts AC may not be working properly. Switch your filter off. No, nope. no, it just makes a very random noise. So definitely a problem with volts AC. Let's try ohms, which should give us 100 ohms plus or minus 0.2. And that's very nice, 100 ohms, 99.9 .9 something. And if we go up a range, then 100.04 ohms. And we go to kilo ohms, so that should be 0.1, yes. That's all working, that's working very nicely actually, the ohms range. So our biggest problem seems to be volts AC, which is all over the shop. So that's supposed to be 13 volts plus or minus 2. It's a pretty inaccurate test anyway, but we're getting, well, something like double that. But our volts DC and ohms are lovely. I think for now, I'll put the cabinet lid back on because it makes the display a little bit easier to read. Okay, so last quick check while well, we've uh, now put the lid back on. So that's the uh, calibrated 20 volts. That's the uh, completely uncalibrated twin, uh, 13 volts AC, and that's the uh, calibrated um, 100 ohms, which works quite well and works in kilo ohms range as well. 
and let's just enjoy the uh, beauty of this display with the lights turned down. Well, we've gone from a completely non-working state to a mostly working condition on this beautiful Fluke 8375A digital multimeter from around about 1972. So it's about the same age as my Hillman Avenger car. It's a fantastic piece of technology for its day. Hope you've enjoyed it. Bye for now.